Well, I think it's an honor to be a leader. The female part uh, is just a bonus, I suppose. Uh, I, I think I, as I look back and at where I've come from, there were other women who fought battles that I didn't have to fight, literally and figuratively. And so I think, you know, much like I talked about today, we all stand on the shoulders of other people that have come before us that, that uh, paved the way. And so I'm very honored and humbled uh, to be selected as the leader for the National Guard. Well, I think the challenge for us is, you know, as Arizona grows, I think the composition of the National Guard should grow commensurate with the increase in population. So certainly our ability to recruit um, and to staff our positions here, uh, to man, train, and equip is always important to us in terms of shrinking budgets. Um, and I think the, the bigger piece is, you know, we're coming off a pretty high ops tempo for, for the National Guard. So we've, we've done the COVID mission, we have, and we're still doing it. We're, we did the uh, support the law enforcement for the civil disturbance mission. We now are participating in the Southern Arizona Law Enforcement Mission, where we're backfilling some of our law enforcement partners down in the Southern counties to address some of the secondary and tertiary effects of the crisis at the border. So I think balancing those, in addition to doing our primary mission, which is of course training to become the, uh, the primary combat reserve for the active duty in terms of multi-domain combat lethal operations. So training is still key. We still have to do that in addition to our community missions. And then of course, nationally to deploy and answer the nation's call when, when our servicemen have to go abroad or, or uh, globally. So I think the key for me is to balance all of those and to make sure that those who serve also serve themselves and take care of themselves and take time to regenerate, refocus, to live a balanced life, to balance family work. And you know, for our drill status guardsmen too, it's also balancing their civilian jobs and making sure that we don't overtax our civilian employers while the civilian employers support the drill status guardsmen. I don't think recruitment's been a struggle. I think we've got a good recruiting team. Uh, we anticipate getting some uh, other missions where we can be successful here with the Guard. And so I don't know that it's a problem to get the people. I think what we would like to do is try to grow commensurate with the population levels in Phoenix. You know that's exploding. And so if there is an, an emergency, um, then certainly you're going to have more people subject to uh, emergent need, which now you will need an equivalent amount that could surge to support that here in the community. So that too, and, and um, yeah. well, you know, the Arizona Department of Health Services is running point on that. They've got the mission and we're here to support them and their efforts, whether it's advertisement, whether it's sending out mobile teams or getting out into the community. So, so we partner with them and I mean, certainly you can't force people to get vaccines, right? And so we encourage them, we try to educate, and we're trying to support um, and partner with other state agencies to do that. And I want to sure, well, that's a good question. So we, you know, the mission and the funding goes through the end of the fiscal year. And so we've made a commitment to continue to support through the end of the fiscal year with our food banks and with our partners. And the best thing we can do as a, as a guard force is to be transparent and to just communicate with the community partners that we are supporting. And so you'll see, a tailoring as we head towards the end of the mission. So we have to bring people off orders. You have to do administrative things to, to process them off of orders. And so that will taper as we head towards September. Um, but certainly we don't wanna leave people in an unfortunate situation. So the, so the guard stands ready to continue to support. Um, it may not be with COVID dollars as that mission ends. But there are other things certainly that we can do in terms of encouraging volunteer service and, and just reaching out and communicating. And, and you know, who can predict what comes next? But I think the Guard has been exceptionally able to pivot and to respond. Uh, so if we stay relevant, we stay trained, we'll be there. You know, I hope it's prepared me. I guess you never know until you're in the seat. Um, but I don't know that there aren't other similarly situated and well-qualified individuals all among the ranks. I think you take advantage of opportunities, you take advantage of training, and hopefully you're in a position where when you get tapped on the shoulder and they say, hey, you, next person up, then you're allowed to take advantage of that opportunity. So I always like to say we prepare as if we're next, but we never know if we are. And I got to tell you, you've got so many qualified people here at the senior levels. Any one of them could have stepped into my shoes. It's just the governor tapped my shoulder this time.
is there anything else that you wanted to add that I didn't ask about? Uh, no, I'm thankful for everybody that came today. I, I'm very thankful for opportunities, not outcomes, as I as I talked about earlier, but I'm thankful for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I try to keep things on their simplest level. And, and uh, you know, I joke with my staff that I'm a Sesame Street kind of girl and a Mr. Rogers. That's how I grew up. And, and I, I follow a lot of the Mr. Rogers advice where he says, look for helpers. And I think if you are willing to ask for help and look for help, they're there. So we have great staff and great helpers here. And I couldn't be more proud to be part of this team. It, it's really felt like a homecoming.